Hey guys, Sen here, back in on some more capital rates, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a new strategy that I've been using a lot recently, and that's the Flying Fortress with the Zap Spells and the Rocket Balloons. Alright, if you look down at the troop bar, you'll notice that this attack looks a lot like straight up Rocket Loon Zap, except I've traded a bunch of Rocket Balloons for one Flying Fortress. Now because of that, this attack actually plays out a lot differently. So normally I'm using my rocket balloons to surgically remove all of the air defenses on the base. But on this attack, I'm using one flying fortress, sending it in, and then using those rocket balloons to help support it. So starting this replay, I drop in a couple of rocket balloons, and then one fortress in behind. Those rocket balloons help take out all the air defenses on the approach, as well as make sure that my flying fortress doesn't take any damage as it enters into the range of the expo. Or not expo, but blast bow. Uh, this is the clean capital. Now, uh, the flying fortress, I thought to use the flying fortress because I was actually having a lot of trouble using straight up rocket balloons against the golem quarry. The golem quarry at higher levels has a lot of uh, big splash defenses like the blast bows and the rocket artilleries. And uh, those do a lot of damage to big clusters of rocket balloons, so I was really struggling against the space. So I thought to bring the Flying Fortress, which is one beefy unit that has a lot of HP, it targets defenses from range, and even though it's really slow, and it's even slower because I'm using zaps instead of rage, I'm able to bring in the rocket balloons to help uh, it move through the major threats on the base. And so it can just slowly work its way through areas with low air uh, damage coverage. Uh, so I use those rocket balloons. Uh, they trigger all those zap traps, but then I send in another couple to take out that air defense. And once that air defense goes down, you'll notice that this fortress is not going to have much resistance. And it's going to be able to take out all of these defenses in while it's in range of these uh, big splash defenses that aren't going to do much damage. So that's another nice thing about the Flying Fortress is that it's able to outrange the Rapid Rockets, which are normally the biggest threats to Rocket Balloons, but because the Rapid Rocket has such little range, it has a hard time actually hitting your Flying Fortress in a lot of cases. Now, uh, now that my Flying Fortress is down, you'll, you can see that uh, there's like nothing left on the base, especially after I finish zapping all of these structures on the back end. And you can see how strong this attack is. Even though this base is pretty low level, I was able to take out so much of it. And my cleanup hit is really easy. And I'll just uh, skip through the part of this uh, <laughs> one Larry trying to beat through the wall. I don't know if it's even going to get through, but let's just skip over to the next attack. Now, I forgot to mention on the first replay, once again, you're going to be zapping down Spirit Throwers, Air Defenses, and Rapid Rockets, just like from Rocket Loon Zap, and you want to be targeting the ones that are deeper inside the base that's harder to reach with your Fortress and Rocket Balloons. But other than that, as you can see, uh, this base is just completely crushed already. I have five Rocket Balloons left in the camp, and all of the Air Defenses are already down. There's only really a Rocket Artillery and a Blast Bow left on the base, and I can just crush through those with my remaining rocket balloons. So as you can see, this attack isn't that difficult, but it is really effective on some bases, especially the Golem Quarry. So if you're looking for an attack that uh, isn't as difficult as rocket balloons, I don't consider this attack as good as rocket balloon zap uh, once you master that attack. But if you're just looking for an easy attack you can pick up and have a lot of success with, uh, this is one that you definitely want to consider, especially against bases that don't have Inferno Towers. Because Inferno Towers are the main defense that is going to melt your Flying Fortress. So, in with the second attack, I draw my Fortress in from the right. Notice how it attacks from range, so it's out of range of the Spear Thrower and Air Bomb as it snipes the Multi-Cannon. Unlike Loons, I have to get on top of defenses. And as they start getting range of the air bombs, I start sprinkling in some loons to help DPS the air bombs down. Now, uh, the fortress can tank spear throwers and the big splash defenses, but you want to make sure it doesn't get hit by the air bombs or the single target air defenses. Now, I drop a ram to try to tank the zap trap, but I drop in my rocket balloon too soon, and so the zap trap actually hits the ram. But on the left side, 
Notice I drop the ram, wait a little bit, and then drop in the rocket balloon. So, Golem Quarry has zap traps, and if you suspect an area might have a zap trap, it's really worth it to bring in a ram, which is 5 camp space, and can uh, tank the zap trap and then spawn a couple of barbs. Especially if you're going to drop in a rocket balloon behind, because the zap traps one-shot your rocket balloons, and also uh, it will do like a thousand or so damage to your fortress, so it's just worth bringing a couple's camp space worth of rams to help search for those on the space. And now at this point, you'll notice unlike on the last replay where I got a lot of the base down on the first attack, I have my work cut out for me on the second attack and you'll be able to see the power of this strategy. And uh, for some reason on this attack, uh, they always end up with a Larry beating through the wall, I don't know why. But yeah, once again, the last 1 minute and 20 seconds of this replay is that Larry trying to beat through that wall and I'm just going to skip over it. So now we're trying to finish off the rest of this base. Uh, this blast though is low and I know I can target it with a rocket balloon if I'm pretty precise on the drop so uh, I start off by taking that out after I zap down some of the defenses that I want to take down and then drop in my flying fortress. Notice how uh, the area I dropped it doesn't have much uh, air targeting defenses, it just has the blast bow on it. And once again, the blast bow isn't going to do too much damage, so I can just let the fortress slowly work its way towards the blast bow. And I'll help DPS the blast bow down with a couple of rocket balloons, so it doesn't take too much more damage from it. But then, afterwards, the fortress is going to work its way down. Uh, those rocket balloons also tank a zap trap, which is nice, but... I send in some rocket balloons on the flank to clear out the air defense and spear throwers, keep the fortress moving through the base and not taking damage. And once you, once again, you can see the power of the fortress's range. It's out of range of that air bombs as it clears some of the ground targeting defenses. And as it gets in range, I drop in some more rocket balloons, take out the air bombs, take out the spear thrower. And as you can see, this fortress is still very healthy and there's not much left on the base that can even hit it, and I even have two more rocket balloons to drop. So even though there was so much left on the base, that fortress was able to slowly work its way through, and I was able to protect it really well with my rocket balloons. At this point, I just have to make sure that that air defense, which is the last major threat to the fortress, isn't going to do damage or much damage to it. And I just wait for the air defense to lock onto the fortress and sneak in one last rocket balloon to take it down in that space. That's the space down in two attacks once again. Alright, so this last replay is against Barb Camp. And as you can see, I've already taken out a lot of the base. This is the second cleanup hit that I'm doing against this. And I set this up with Rocket Loon Zap. If you were here for yesterday's stream, you might recognize this as one of the bases that I t attacked live. And so, if you want to check out the first attack against this base, go watch the stream from yesterday. And I believe I've timestamped uh, all the highlights in the comments. And this one is timestamped as Barb Camp Rocket Loon, or some variant of that. And I was planning to just do two Rocket Loon attacks against this, but... I ended up deciding to finish off with the Flying Fortress because what I noticed was if I send a fortress down south uh, after I zap down these air defenses with my six zaps, uh, the fortress can snipe this giant cannon. Uh, this has a lot of HP and normally if I were to try to reach this air bombs, I would have to go through this giant cannon and sacrifice a bunch of rocket balloons to get to this air bombs. But because my fortress is ranged, I can snipe this huge high hit point defense even though it's not shooting back. Uh, it's really annoying for rocket balloons to get through uh, when it's covered by a splash defense like this. And so not only that, but after I clear out this spear thrower and this air defense, uh, this huge row of defenses is all ground targeting and my fortress can snipe through those as well. So uh, that is one of the advantages of bringing a fortress instead of some rocket loons. If you identify areas of, of the base that don't have much air coverage, uh, the fortress is much better at sniping some of the ground targeting defenses, whereas the rocket balloons, if they were to try to take these out, they would get beat on by air defenses, spear throwers, air bombs, and that would just be a nightmare for you. So I bring my fortress for this attack, and the other nice thing about bringing fortress for a second cleanup attack is if you're able to keep the fortress alive through the entirety of the attack, 
uh, you'll get uh, even more bonus gold because the bonus gold is calculated by how many truth space that you're able to keep alive at the end of an attack and it's easier to keep alive one fortress rather than a bunch of rocket balloons so you can see the fortress snipes that air bombs and then I start supporting it from the sides with rocket wounds. I make sure to take out that spear thrower in air defense and that fortress will just have free reign over these ground targeting defenses like I said. And now the fortress is moving in towards the back end and there's not much left. There's that one air defense and that one air bombs. I snipe the tesla from the side once the minion clears the trash so I can target it. And at this point it just kind of slowly work its way through. Uh, I make sure I don't time fail by holding on to one camp of rocket balloons that I can save for cleanup against some of the trash and this space is crushed so this strategy is super simple and really effective you just have to make sure that you you're not using this against say balloon lagoon or dragon cliffs which those bases have inferno towers so that is the main downside to this attack but when you find uh, a good barb camp, a good builder's workshop, or a golem quarry for it. Uh, this is a really strong strategy that I consider a must know or a must learn in the clan capital. So that'll be all for me today. If you enjoyed today's video, like and subscribe and take care.